Thank you very much, and uh, thank you for the invitation. It's a privilege to be here, and uh, as a clinician, I can say that uh, it is very motivating to have uh, in the same place all the protagonists, uh, the, phys the patients, the carers, the professionals, and the decision makers. Um, I, I participate in many clinical trials, and I have been a member occasionally to scientific advisory boards, but I have no conflict of interest for this uh, presentation. I will not uh, learn you anything about the fact that uh, cognitive and especially memory disorders are distressing with age, and uh, the, main, the main cause that comes to mind is Alzheimer's disease, which is famous and feared. But people are not all alike. Some worry quickly and want to know and understand what happens to them, so they rush to, to, to a specialist to know what is going on. But others reassure themselves, attribute their difficulties to age, do not want to know more, and delay the time for the first consultation. And the same for the environment. Some are reassuring and some are stressed and want the patients to consult early. Uh, I will not learn you anything also on the fact that performing the diagnosis of a cognitive disorders is of major importance because it's not only Alzheimer's disease, it, it can be a, a related disease which has not the same prognosis, which has not the same uh, symptoms and uh, also to make the difference and sometimes it's an additional problem to have another somatic disease like sleep apnea or a, 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 a vascular risk factor which is not controlled. And the early diagnosis increased the empowerment of all the people involved in the disease, not only the patient himself or herself, but also the, the relatives and also the, the, the professionals. So when the cognitive disorders progress, anosognosia, the fact that the patient is not aware of his uh, or her state, is more frequent and more severe. And also, besides the anosognosia, the fact that the person forgets uh, that she or he forgets and deny the troubles and refuse assistance and support, and which, uh, of course, penalize not only the patients, but also the, 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 the carers. So, as we have seen, most of the diagnoses are still late in the sense that the damage in the brain is such that it seems difficult to, to carry it. It's too late to remove the lesions. It's maybe too late to improve the patient. And what we have learned this last uh, decade is that we have now what we call biomarkers and uh, it's, uh, it showed us that the, the disturbances in the brain occur much earlier than the symptoms themselves. And uh, the, deposits, the deposition of beta amyloid and the tau uh, pathology occur years, 10, 15, maybe 20 years before the first symptoms. So we have a large window to try to stop the process and, uh, and, and make the patient live without any symptoms. And uh, this is another way to show it, and uh, the, the, the arrow shows you that the clinical symptoms occur much later than the change in the biomarkers what we find in the CSF with the lumbar puncture, what we find in imaging with the MRI or um, SPECT or TEP uh, imaging. All these um, biomarkers are not used in clinical practice, but are, of course, very important to understand the process of the disease for research and also in difficult cases when the symptoms are not typical. <clears throat> 
And uh, the last but not the least uh, this discovery is that uh, we, it, it has, is, the biomarker changes increase the risk of AD, but there are other genetic and environmental factors that modulate this risk. That is why it's not possible to make a, um, to make a prognosis at an individual uh, level, on, only on a population level, but uh, it depends on uh, how the, the, the genetics, uh, the way of life, and uh, other diseases interfere with the uh, Alzheimer process, process. That is why there is such a difference uh, between the two green lines, and the, the, the disease will not progress the same uh, according to, to, to the different people. And as uh, Bengt just said, there are now new uh, criteria to, to diagnose the Alzheimer's disease, so this particular disease, Alzheimer's disease, uh, early, not, not at a time when everybody knows that the patient has dementia and uh, put a label of Alzheimer's disease on it, but uh, this has been shown in uh, the US as well as an, in international, the, the international working group criteria. So now we, uh, at, uh, we have some issues because we are, we are at the crossroad of two distinct but interdependent phenomena, the neuropathology, the lesions in the brain, and the experience of the person and those around. And the true early diagnosis would be made before the clinical symptoms with uh, imaging and biological screening. But as I said, it's not entirely reliable at the individual level. We can only disclose a high risk, but we cannot say when the symptoms will occur and their, product, uh, and their progression. And we know also that uh, when we, have, uh, we perform autopsy of of people, they may have Alzheimer's lesions and had not yet the symptoms of Alzheimer's lesions. So it, the, the good news is that we have time to, 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 to act, to, to perform something. It, of course, it raises a lot of ethical issues. It's meaningless to scare people if nothing can be done, but, it's also, but also it's meaningful for research purpose and for people who are really uh, anxious, and many people are generous and want to help to move the research forward. So it is really an individual matter. We have a lot of arguments to, to think that it's uh, good to have an early diagnosis. And uh, the main reasons are that uh, the early diagnosis, I mean, just when the first symptoms occur, it will give meaning to the symptoms. It, 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 uh, uh, it gives an opportunity for the person to be informed of uh, the situation, to accept the treatment to seek suitable help for their needs, to anticipate the future, and to consider inclusion in clinical research. And this uh, early diagnosis, also from the very beginning of the symptoms, enables the carers to take the patient's experience better into account, to give answers to the questions and to the doubts brought about these symptoms, to obtain information on the disease, to prepare the future on many planes, and to behave appropriately. And this is maybe probably the, the, the most important thing. But there are also disadvantages of an early diagnosis, because at a time when the symptoms are too subtle to draw clinical attention, the diagnosis may suddenly change the status of the person and the other people's opinion. That's what we call the stigma. And many physicians still find many reasons uh, for not making the diagnosis, especially if they are not uh, themselves confident in their diagnosis. They think, but they are not sure. The risk of communicating an, an er a, a wrong diagnosis. Uh, and the, the feeling of uncertain, uncertainty when you hesitated between, for example, Alzheimer's disease and frontotemporal degeneration or dementia with levy body. Uh, 
it's very difficult to communicate uh, one's hesitations. The feeling also that the person would rather not know, which is uh, subjective, and the feeling that the person, uh, the carer does not wish the person to be informed or could not take in such bad news, and also the, the difficulty to communicate a painful diagnosis and the associated risk of negative emotion reaction or the fear of even uh, suicide. But um, the, the early pre-symptomatic diagnosis, I mean, when the symptoms are really not uh, obvious, but there is this uh, subjective memory complaint sometimes, that is, uh, if the diagnosis is made, it should be disclosed as a pre-symptomatic diagnosis, which is uh, uh, surrounded by uh, counseling, and it's a long process. Any diagnosis of uh, such a frightening disease needs to take into account the person's feeling about the situation, especially if it remains some uncertainty and it takes times. And uh, we do not have to rush to, to make the diagnosis. We have to, to, uh, to, to coincide with the, the, the person's change about their feeling of, on, on the disease. For the families, the diagnosis and its disclosure are helpful in implementing appropriate support. And when questioned a posteriori afterwards, the families declare that they had rather known at an, an early stage to better react when the first difficulties appear. Um, the, the great in, in survey in, um, in in questionnaires, the great majority of people without cognitive decline, and including the oldest, want to be communicated a possible future diagnosis rather than being held in ignorance. Um, it has been performed in many countries, in many cultures. And the same for patients with memory complaints attending a memory clinic. They say they want to know. Uh, but, and the carers do not always wish the patients to be informed, which is a paradox. They want something for themselves of which they prefer to deprive the person uh, which, is, uh, which has these symptoms. But we have to keep in mind that the moral pain of the disclosure should not be confused with a suicidal risk. There is no link between disclosure alone and increase societal risk. And this is uh, especially true for Alzheimer's disease, maybe less for other diseases where the depressive symptoms are more accurate like uh, vascular dementia or dementia with Levy bodies or other pathology. What is important is the fact that the patient had or didn't had uh, a, a a history of depression. Depression, of course, is a cause of suicide by itself, and the combination sometimes can be a risk, but not in patients with no history of depression. Relatives have to manage their own reaction and may not feel able to cope with a person's distress. They, the, the person fear of losing the autonomy and being a burden for the relatives. So this type of feeling is morally painful, but on the other hand, it testifies to the integration of the diagnosis and to the person's capacity to verbalize their feelings, which is a good news in a way. These persons express relief that their cognitive complaints are explained and taken seriously. And on the other way, conversely, absence of diagnosis may increase the suicide at risk because nobody cares about the feeling of the patients and no explanation has been uh, done, given. Uh, the factors of an optimal uh, early diagnosis uh, and disclosure um, is the, the fact that the approach around the disclosure should begin when starts the diagnosis process, when we have to uh, think of the possible diagnosis before starting the workup of uh, knowing the cause of uh, the complaint. 
So the diagnosis process as well as the, the disclosure process have a time frame, frame which derives from consultation and workup delay. And this duration should not be too long, of course, but nonetheless, it permits the persons to progress in their relation with the disease and diminish the brutality of the disclosure. So it's not good to have to, to be uh, too much um, pushed to give the diagnosis. We have to, to think of the consequences before disclosing the, 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 the diagnosis. So it's good to know the person and what is the person, the knowledge and thoughts regarding the symptoms and their possible causes, including Alzheimer's disease, and uh, to correct the false beliefs and to personalize uh, disclosure and program to be implemented after the disclosure. The results of the test are explained as they arrive, so the disclosure process is gradual over uh, the several visits. Uh, the disclosure concludes the diagnostic process and ensures the transition towards implementation of treatment, management, and follow-up. And we also have to keep in mind that the disclosure is made to at least two persons, the person with the cognitive decline and the carer. So it's a double disclosure. And the physicians must be focused on the feelings of both interlocutors, their silence, their solicitation, favoring the expression of these feelings and the emergence of first questions. But the first questions are late, usually, because the people can be completely uh, dazed and have uh, uh, an emotional anesthesia just after the, the first, uh, the first uh, disclosure. So time, availability, and empathy are mandatory. And most important, after the disclosure, other consultations will allow to make sure that the information has been integrated and to address the progression of the disease and its management, but afterwards. The presence of several members of the family may be useful because of course, more questions can be raised, and also the, the issue of the professional helps and support groups will be addressed. So there have been some guidelines of the disclosure consultation. Uh, they, to a brief reminder at the beginning of the consultation, the brief reminder of the consultation framework, so that the issue of the situation is clear and the patient is not fluid with information. And um, regardless of the people present, the first questions are asked to the person with cognitive decline to show that the, this is the main uh, interlo uh, interlocutor. The diagnosis must be given in clear and concise words without uh, an overuse of technical words and without any ambiguity, and it's sometimes difficult to adjust properly. The diagnosis must be simple and should not be too segmented. It's likely to, that up to the stage, the exchanges with the physicians uh, will be centered on the memory or the cognitive problem. And after that, it's better to name the, the disease by itself, by its name, by the name Alzheimer's disease. The emotional load is such that the goal of the consultation should be focused on the transmission and the reception of this main piece of information. So relatives report the needs for a significant time for focusing the diagnosis and its uh, implication. And the rest of the consultation will ab enable to introduce other information, but it should preferably be repeated remotely. And uh, in agreement with the patient, the general practitioner should be informed and uh, use the same words uh, to relay the process. I would say just a word about the early onset, that is the, the dementia that occur before the age of 65, because in this stay, in this. Uh, in this case, there may be other causes of uh, Alzheimer's disease, much more causes than uh, in, a later school, uh, in the later age. And the features can be atypical, so the diagnosis is already delayed. Uh, 
especially when there is a psychiatric history and the, fam the context is completely different. So uh, this raises other ethical issues, but we have some uh, process now with uh, diet, for example, to, to manage the, the people who have a genetic cause of uh, early onset dementia. And we learned a lot about the pre-symptomatic diagnosis of Huntington's disease to set up the four major axes of consultation, uh, the motivation factors, the level of information, the level of emotional and cognitive preparation, and the level of anticipation regarding the future. So uh, also there have been a huge progress uh, on the diagnosis and the disclosure of this diagnosis. There is still progress to make. And um, identifying the negative consequences of the late diagnosis cannot be strictly confused with the identification of the benefits of a timely diagnosis, which remains uh, very uh, dependent on the person, uh, the person themselves. And it's uh, important to dedicate research in medical, human, and social science on this issue. Thank you.